Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. And today I want to talk to you about ideas. I've mentioned that I have notebooks full of ideas. There's one right here on my desk right now. There's a whole, like half a dozen of them up on this bookshelf. They are filled to the brim with ideas. Some of them are ideas that I fleshed out over several pages. Some are just literally a sentence. Hey, wouldn't it be cool if a game feature did XYZ? I still have people in comments and direct messages offering me their ideas. In some case, they've even put together a little demo or they have a script or something and they want me to review them. And I'm, I'm always turning it down and I will tell you why. It's a dangerous thing to do. Most companies have a rule that they're not allowed to have anyone at the company look at unsolicited submissions. Movies, movie companies don't look at scripts. Game companies don't look at, you know, development ideas or demos or anything because they might already have something in the works that's similar and then they might be opening themselves up to a lawsuit that they've stolen someone's idea. Now, and I've, I've told you how many books I've got that are page after page after page of idea. I guarantee if a hundred of you sent me a game idea, I'd probably match up on at least one of you and probably a lot more than one. So it's super dangerous to look at someone's idea. But I want to kind of talk about more than that. I want to talk about more than me not looking at them. First of all, I just let me state this just outright. I think it's very sweet that people are sending me things and I know you would love me to look at it. Um, but there's also this weird attitude that comes with just a tiny fraction of a few of you. Some people are acting like their idea was the really hard part. Like just having the idea was most of the heavy lifting. Or a second attitude I'm encountering is people go, here's an idea I had. You should be really grateful I'm allowing you to hear it. As if the, I should be thanking them for allowing me to see their idea. Whoa. Um, let me just say that like over the years, I could go to lunch with other game developers and then that hour, I would hear a dozen good ideas. They would talk about, they would start talking about the games we're making and other games and games they've played and then game, uh, game ideas they've had on their own. And ideas are, are, are not the hard part. And I've said this before, so I'm going to say it really loud and clear right now. Ideas are a dime a dozen. Ideas are the easy part. Ideas on their own are so cheap that they are nearly worthless. Worthless. I feel bad saying it that way because I know some people are going to get really irate that I'm saying this or their feelings are going to get hurt. But I feel like some people aren't hearing this. And I've tried to be really circumspect about it. But I feel like it's just not coming through. So again, ideas are nearly worthless. So l let me tell you a quick story about a dog I had. And I, I've shown a picture of him before. It's the dog I had during Troika and at Carbine. His name was Cooter. He came from the um, a no-kill shelter. He'd been there for six months and he'd been on the street for six months. He was a German shepherd. He was very smart, but he was very sensitive. And I learned very quickly when I was trying to train him that uh, he already was well-trained. He knew a lot of stuff. And he was very easy to train. So I could be very gentle with him. But when we were on walks, it's sometimes like he wouldn't listen to me. I'd tell him to stop and he'd keep going. I'd tell him to sit and he wouldn't. So I'd have to, I almost said bark. I'd have to yell the command to him. And then he would duck his head and be like, oh. Uh. And that's when I realized he was also very sensitive. So if I ever raised my voice to him, if I ever got angry, he would get very, very upset. He would very upset. He would hang his head. He would mope. He would walk really quietly around the office or back at the house because he knew he had upset me. But what had happened was I told him to do something and he didn't listen. He didn't do it. So I had to yell at him. And then suddenly he's like, oh my God, you're yelling at me. There are people that I've worked with who are like this. They give you an idea and you respond like, well, that's a really good idea, but we don't have room for it in this game. Or we don't have time to add anything more. Or that's a really good idea, but it doesn't fit with this game because of XYZ. 
why don't you hold on to it and maybe we'll try to do it in another game. These gentle remarks go completely unheeded. And the next day, they're asking about their idea again. Or they bring it up in a team meeting. Well, I still think we should do this. Finally, I have to be super direct with them. We're not doing it. It's not going in the game. You need to stop bringing it up. And then they get all upset. They're really hurt. They're like, you were brutal to me. Sometimes they've complained. And I, I've had to go to my boss and go, look, I've literally talked to this person five times about this idea. I've explained why it doesn't fit in the game. I explain why we don't have time to do it. I explain why the existing feature connects to other features better. They don't hear it. They, I thought for first they didn't agree with me and they were just going to go, okay, I'm going to keep saying this idea. But they literally didn't hear me. They would, they would bring up the same idea and say how great it was. And I'm like, but it doesn't work well. And they'd be like, eh. I mean, like, you've had weeks to think about this. You should have a response that's better than that. And my point here is having to be brutal with someone to get them to hear you is an awful thing to have to do as a manager. And sometimes you have to do it. And I will tell you that of all the different types of people I've worked with, people who lie, people who are lazy, you know, people who are just trying to do the bare minimum of what they want to do and skate by, these people who don't hear you until you are brutally direct are probably some of the most annoying people that I've had to work with. Because they force you to be unkind and then blame you for it. It's, it's, you can keep saying, you can keep saying your gentle responses and it doesn't sink in. And it is a frustrating way of working. Um, and I don't want to move this, by the way, don't even read into this. This is not an introvert, extrovert thing. This is not an old person, young person thing. This is not a manager employee thing i've seen this in all directions i've i've been the youngest developer in the room and i've been the oldest developer in the room i've been the employee the employer i've seen this for 40 years it's not new it's not going away now let me i don't i i don't like being non-constructive so let me talk about what i think you should do so let's say you you have an idea that you want to send me or you want to send a game company. You just, you're trying to send someone this. I've said this before. I will say it again. Make a prototype. This applies so much to ideas because ideas are just, they're easy to have. They're a dime a dozen. I have 12 good ideas before breakfast. I should have 12 ideas before breakfast. One sometimes is good. Um, what you need to do is you need to figure out a way of expressing your idea as a realized feature. So if you're a system designer, write it down as you're doing a system design doc. Write all the elements of this feature. Fill in the numbers if it has parameters. Don't just say it, you know, <coughs> the bullets. This one does a lot of damage. Say, well, I'm expecting creatures to have 200 hit points and this does 30 to 40 hit points per shot. Make a full dialogue if you're a narrative designer. Write a full dialogue. Write several dialogues. Put in checks against attributes and skills that you've said, okay, this I'm going to assume these exist in the game. And here, look at how reactive my dialogue is. Do checks against existing quests. Say, I'm, I'm assuming a main story arc that goes like this, and I'm going to check. This is how this NPC would react to different parts along that story arc. If you're an artist, make some shippable quality art. Maybe it's concept art. Maybe you did it 2D. Maybe you did it in um, 3D Studio. Maybe you made you know a, a model. Maybe you showed how you rigged the skeleton. But do that. Make something. Don't just talk about it. Especially if you can take an engine, Godot, Unity, Unreal, and make a working demo of the feature. So if you can... Make a version of the dialogue that you can actually play through. It doesn't matter that there's not a game there. That you start demo starts and you're already talking to somebody and you just talk back and forth. If you can show your gun in action, if you can show a section of a world and say, this is what I'm envisioning this thing to look like. That just goes so far to showing your idea as an expressed idea. 
and not just something you thought of. And I will tell you why this is important. If you don't do any of those things, if you just want to have an idea that you tell someone, if you can't do that work, why should they? If you can't do this work, and I've said this is, I've lost track of how many times I've said make a demo. If you're not going to do that, why should I even look at your idea? And that sounds harsh, but there's a lot of you who aren't hearing me say this. So, no, I don't really want to go over your ideas. And because I'm still working in the industry, I can't actually look at your demos or anything because it may be very similar to something I'm doing for a client and I'm not going to open them up for legal action because if I'm already working on something, say, that has flying zombies that shoot lasers out of their eyes and you send me this great idea, I said, I want to do something like Walking Dead, but the zombies can fly and shoot lasers. And I'm like, uh-oh, that we're already doing something like that. It may be so obscure like that that you may think, Tim stole my idea and gave it to this other company. So for that reason alone, and right now, because I'm working for two or three clients, I literally can't look at submission submitted work because I'm not opening them up to legal action thinking that the ideas I'm telling them to go with might have come from something that someone gave me. So I have a legal reason not to look at your stuff, but I'm trying to tell you what the reason is companies and other game devs and stuff don't want to see your stuff. When you finally apply for a job and have a resume, please don't just say, and here's a list of ideas I have. If you can show them a realized expression of the idea, you're way ahead of things. So that's as brutal and as direct and as forward as I think I can get. So I hope you get the point of this video, which is I can't look at your ideas or your demos. And when you submit them to companies, do it as part of your applying for a job. Don't just say, hey, guys, I think you should make this game because they're probably not going to look at it and they're probably going to send it back unopened. Anyway, I hope this was a positive spin on this concept. It's as positive as I can make it, but I hope people hear me. Thank you.